And this chapter, it is about, you know, a very important value. It's about satisfaction. It's about being content. But this is so against our human nature. We are never, ever satisfied. And like, of course, you, you get uh, marks, you want more marks. If uh, you get a house, you want a bigger house, isn't it? Right? So our, and you know, like what? Our desires are unlimited. But sometimes they might land us into a miserable situation. So before things go wrong, we should know where to put a stop, where we need to stop our desires and learn to accept the situation. Okay, right? So if a life is there, yeah, there are some things which we can change, but some things which we cannot. So today we're going to read about the story of Madame Lozelle, Matilda Lozelle. And she was a very beautiful lady. She had lots of expectations from life, but she was quite disappointed the way her life turned out to be. She wanted to look pretty. She wanted to wear nice dresses. She wanted to have a good life, but her life was absolutely in contrast with that, right? And one bad decision which she took in her life, it ended up changing her life completely. And sometimes we think that people who are very delicate and very taken care of and, you know, very, uh, what you can say, sophisticated, they will not be able to deal with the pressures of life. But that is what is surprising. Sometimes people who appear to be very delicate, they turn out to be quite tough. But Madame Lozelle here, yes, so if she was there in a way responsible for bringing this problem on herself and her family, she cooperated and was very hardworking. And yes, so she, uh, in fact, it changed her outlook towards life, right? So let's uh, start here. She was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks. Beautiful lady. And uh, yes, it felt as if destiny has also done a mistake. She was born into a very humble family, a family of clerks. She had no dowry, no hopes, no means of becoming known, loved, and married by a man, either rich or distinguished. And she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of the Board of Education. She was simple, but she was unhappy. So she was a beautiful lady and uh, but she did not have any prospects in life considering how our society is so she did not have dowry so she could not uh, marry into a you know like a bigger better family she married a simple person her life was simple but she was not happy with the life she did not think that she was born to live this kind of a life she suffered incessantly amrit pal look at your book feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries. She suffered from the poverty of her apartment, the shabby walls and the worn chairs. All these things tortured and angered her. She was born in a simple family. She got married in a simple family. Mehul, where are we reading? Sit properly, please. Rishan, where are we reading? Without the book? Yeah, we're going to start there. So she was leading a simple life, but every day when she looked at her house, she became even more unhappy. Why? Because she felt that, no, this is not the kind of life she wanted. She wanted a luxurious life. She wanted a good life. When she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband, who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air saying, oh, the good pot pie, I know nothing better than that. She would think of elegant dinners, of shining silver. She thought of the exquisite food 
served in marvelous dishes. She had neither frocks nor jewels, nothing. And she loved only those things. Her husband was a simple person and he felt very happy when he would come home and she had made this, uh, you know, like a delicious meal for him. He was very happy with that, but she was not satisfied. She felt, yes, I should have a nice dining table with nice cutlery and I should be leading a good life, right? So she was constantly unhappy. Are we happy with the lives we lead? What do you think makes us uh, unhappy? We are happy with our home, we're family, everything. What is it that makes us un unhappy then? Our desires, yes? Our uh, expectations. So sometimes we have unrealistic expectations. Yeah, and when they are not achieved, we end up becoming unhappy, right? So it is, yes, very important that we should realize the circumstances and there are some things that we cannot change. Okay, like, yeah, you, you don't uh, like have a job you like, you can work hard, you can get a better job, right? But if you think you can change here, like, yeah, because then work hard and try to change your destiny, right? So she thought that I can't do anything about my life. And so she ended being unhappy. What do you think what the atmosphere of the home is if someone is always unhappy and sad and uh, not uh, what you can say. It would be unhappy, isn't it? Again, the, the family atmosphere will also be like that, isn't it? So, right, so she's not there doing a nice thing, just always imagining things which she's not going to have. She had a rich friend, a schoolmate at the convent who she did not like to visit. She suffered so much when she returned. She wept for whole days from despair and disappointment. Do you think she felt jealous on seeing her rich friend? That's why she was unhappy? Yes. So she went over there and she saw her house and jewels and everything. It made her very upset. One evening, her husband returned elated, bearing in his hand a large envelope. He's very happy. He's got an envelope for her. Here, here is something for you. She quickly drew out a printed card on which were inscribed these words. The Minister of Public Instruction and Madame George Rampineau ask the honor of Monsieur and Madame Lozelle's company Monday evening, January 18 at the Minister's residence. So she's got an invitation to a very important function, right? And uh, her husband is very happy that uh, she is going to be happy because uh, she spends most of the time just being what a sad and disappointed. Instead of being delighted as a husband had hoped, she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring. What do you suppose I want with that? She's very angry. What am I going to do with this invitation? But my dearie, I thought it would make you happy. You never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one. So you can go out and feel happy. Everybody wishes one and it is very select. Not many are given to employees. You will see the whole official world there. So this was uh, an invitation which was not given to everybody. And uh, so she would get a chance to meet other people, right? All the officials who would be there. She looked at him with an ir irritated eye and declared impatiently. What do you suppose I have to wear to such a thing as that? That's your biggest problem. It is an official function. What am I going to wear? He had not thought of that. He stammered. Why the dress you wear when we go to the theater? It seems very pretty to me. He was silent, stupefied, in dismay at the sight of his wife weeping. So this little thing, you know, it's hurt her so much. How can I go there? Because I don't have anything nice to wear. He stammered, what is the matter? What is the matter? By violent effort, she had controlled her vexation and responded in a calm voice, wiping her moist cheeks, nothing. Only I have no dress and consequently, I cannot go to this affair. Give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than I. 
Stupefied means uh, yes, so she's absolutely you know what he's shocked that he did not expect this uh, reaction. He gave her this invitation, and uh, right, so instead of being happy, yes, she's disappointed, and she's saying, "What will I do with this invitation? How can I go there at such an official function? I don't have a nice dress." And she started crying. He's absolutely surprised and shocked at that reaction. He was grieved. but answered let us see matilda how much would a suitable costume cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple so he says that okay how much do you think uh, a dress would cost something simple that you can wear it for other occasions also she reflected for some seconds thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk so her, her husband was very economical he would try to save as much money as he could and she said i have to ask a decent amount too much money of course uh, i can't ask they have to think about the savings and everything finally she said in a hesitating voice i cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover it francs is the of which country yes so he turned a little pale for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun so right her husband had saved this money he wanted to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer so husband like to go hunting and now he saved money so that he could buy a gun for himself with some friends who went to shoot larks on sunday larks a bird kind of a bird nevertheless he answered very well i will give you 400 francs but try to have a pretty dress so her husband has given the money that he had saved how much money did he give her right Yes, uh, Krishan, please stand up. Why was uh, Madame Lozelle upset on uh, receiving the invitation, or on seeing the invitation? Why was she upset? Amritpal. because she wanted to buy a dress that's why she was on a... she wanted to buy a gun what's the question that i asked why was madam lozel upset why was matilda upset yes and she felt what is the use of this invitation amrit pal please stand up where were you lost right now i think so he is there you know role playing madam lozel so she's lost in a daydreaming and even he is daydreaming so we have a perfect role play going on isn't it you all know what daydreaming is so you you can uh, ask amrit pal he'll tell you what he was doing wake up and be attentive okay sit down krishan where is your book इनविजिबल बुक है मुझे लगता है ग्रिफिन हैज टेकन योर बुक एंड मेड इट इनविजिबल टू पुटा मन में खत्म हो गया व्हाट ई बुक है i'm bringing your notebooks tomorrow all of you okay yeah give it to me today the day of the ball approached and madam lazel seemed sad disturbed anxious nevertheless her dress was nearly ready so her husband sacrificed the money that he had saved to buy a gun that she could buy a nice dress for herself her husband said to her one evening what is the matter with you 
you have acted strangely for two or three days. And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel. He like, she is there, you know, very annoyed and unhappy here, right? Why? That uh, she does not have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with, decorate, right? So that she can look pretty. I shall have such a poverty stricken look. So if I wear this dress without any jewelry, I will not look nice. I would prefer not to go to this party. And poor thing, he's given her his money also. He replied, you can wear some natural flowers. In the season, they look very chic. He bought a chill again, eh? You wear natural flowers? Okay. She was not convinced. No, she replied. There is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women. Shabby means? Shabby house, if you remember, you remember 100 dresses? It was tidy but shabby. Yes, yeah, so not that pretty, you know, not uh, taken care of what you can say. Here in this, uh, not looking good. Okay, so she's saying that I will look very out of place. There'll be rich ladies with jewels and all, and I will uh, look uh, very shabby. I will not uh, look uh, up to the mark, right, uh, among those ladies. Then her husband cried out, how stupid we are. Go and find your friend, Madame Forestier, and ask her to lend you her jewels. Who do you think is Madame Forestier? Yeah, her rich friend, right? And what was Madame Lozelle's reaction whenever she went to her rich friend? She didn't like it. She was disappointed and felt even more upset. She uttered a cry of joy. It's true. I had not thought of that. The next day, she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress. So she's told her sad story, just like Shantanu and her Joban are sharing their sad stories right now. Her Joban is reading without opening the book. Magic. How it's disappeared? <laughs> what? <laughs> Griffin is uh, very, uh, what you can say, popular in your class, isn't it? All of a sudden. Okay, so she's gone to Madame Forestia and uh, she's told her sad story of her big pain and trouble that she has. Madame Forestia went to her closet, took out a large jewel case, brought it, opened it and said, choose my dear. So see, uh, she's so generous. She said, okay, take whatever you want to. She saw at first some bracelets, then a collar of pearls, then a Venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship. She tried the jewels before the glass, hesitated, but could neither decide to take them nor leave them. Then she asked, have you nothing more? So she's looking at all her jewels, right? The pearls and the bracelets and uh, the Venetian cross. She's tried them on, but she says, do you have anything else? Why, yes, look for yourself. I do not know what will please you. Suddenly, she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds. Her hands trembled as she took it out. She placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic, very happy. Then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety, could you lend me this, only this? Why? Yes, certainly. So she looked at her jewels and in the end, what did she select to wear? A diamond necklace. And she's asking a friend very hesitatingly that will her friend lend her a diamond necklace? 
Of course you will. Why? Yes, certainly. She fell upon the neck of her friend, embraced her with passion, then went away with her treasure. So she thanked her friend and she was so happy that she's got this beautiful necklace to wear. The day of the ball arrived. Madame Lozelle was a great success because she was looking so beautiful. She was the prettiest of all. Elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name and wanted to be presented. So they wanted to be introduced to her. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure. Thinking of nothing but all this admiration, this victory so complete and sweet to her heart. So she was so happy. She enjoyed herself. Everybody praising her, noticing her. And uh, yes, yeah, so she had a nice time. She went home towards four o'clock in the morning. Her husband had been half asleep in one of the little salons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much. He threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried, whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume. Modest, very ordinary wrap, wrap like a shawl, you know? So he put a shawl around her, which was not very expensive. In contrast to what? The dress that she was wearing, the necklace that she was wearing. She wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich fur. Around her, there were women and they were, of course, dressed very smartly and they were not wrapping themselves in an ordinary shawl, but in rich furs, okay? So expensive furs. Lizelle detained her. Wait, said he, I'm going to call a cab. But she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly. She didn't want anybody to see her as she was leaving. When they were in the street, they found no carriage and they began to seek for one, hailing the coachman when they saw, whom they saw at a distance. They walked along towards the river, hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages that one sees in Paris after nightfall. It took them as far as the door and they went wearily up to the apartment. It was all over for her. All over the beautiful day that she spent, it was over. And, they, and on this, his part, he remembered that he would have to be at office by 10 o'clock. They reached after four. She moved the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory. She wanted to remember how beautiful she looked. Suddenly, she uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. So did the day end well for her? No, it did not. What happened? She lost the, the necklace, the diamond necklace, which she's borrowed from her friend. Okay? Yes, so we'll uh, stop here.